Hello everyone, uh, welcome to uh, IE323, uh, Statistic Methods for Industrial Engineers. So today we're going to talk about Chapter 8, Fundamental Sampling Distribution and the Data Descriptions. Now let's have a look at two statistical terms, population and sample. So population is the entire collection of units, individuals, or observations in which we are concerned. Sample. By its name, sample is smaller. Sample is a representative subset of the population. A sample is often called the population in miniature. Then, by examining a sample, we can draw conclusions about the population. However, such conclusion cannot be made with 100% certainty and are stated in terms of probability. So any sampling procedures that produces inference that consistently overestimate or underestimate some characteristics of the population is said to be biased. So we choose a random sample in the sense that the observations are made independently and at random. The first example of random sampling is coronavirus testing. During the year of 2020 and 2021, Penn State University is setting up testing sites for students at Pangula Ice Arena or Hinz Family Alumni Center. So students are randomly drawn from the population to test the spread of the virus across the campus. This will help the decision making to open or close the campus. The second example of random sampling is the Pepsi production line. As the filling machine is filling the juice or the drinks into the bottles, and we take random samples from the population to understand the mean of the filling volumes and the variance of the filling volumes so that we can estimate or make inference about the population. Sampling is also widely used for quality inspection in the automotive production line. We take a random sample of automotive parts from the population to make inference about the population mean and the population variance of the dimensionality accuracy of the automotive parts. So the statistics that we calculated from the sample help us make an inference about population parameters. For example, the population mean mu and the population variance, sigma square. So please note here, we use x bar to denote sample mean, s square to denote sample variance. But the population mean is mu and the population variance is sigma square. Errors and residues are too closely related, but easily confused measures. Error is a deviation of the sample from the unobservable population mean or the actual function. Residue is the difference between the sample and either the observed sample mean or the regressed fitted function value. Please note, population mean in general is unobservable, so the arrow, arrows are unobservable. But if you connect a sample, you can compute the sample mean, and you can see each sample, what is the deviation of each sample from the sample mean. So arrows are not observable but residues are observable. Residues can be used as an estimate of arrows, but are different from arrows. So if we assume a normally distributed population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, and choose individuals independently, then we have x1, x2 to xn. They are drawn from the normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square. And then we can calculate the sample mean x bar equals to x1 plus x2 to xn, then divided by n. Here, the difference is very clear. Arrow is the deviation of each sample from the population mean, but residue is the deviation of each sample from the sample mean. And we use different notations, epsilon i to represent arrow and epsilon i hat to represent the residue. Statistic errors are often independent of each other, but residues are not. So the sum of the residues within a random sample is less than zero because, because if we have x1 minus x bar, x2 minus x bar, to xn minus x bar, so this will be epsilon 1 hat, epsilon 2 hat, to epsilon n hat. If we add all this together, it will equals to x1 plus x2 to xn minus n x bar. But the summation of this section 
x1 to xn will equal to nx bar. So nx bar minus nx bar. That is why the sum of the residues within a random sample is zero. So in this way, residues are not independent, but statistic errors are independent random variables. If the individuals are chosen from the population independently. So the sum of the statistic errors within a random sample need not be zero. Because if you change this to x mu, n x bar not necessarily equals to n mu. So this is why the sum of the statistic errors within a random sample need not be zero. If we standardize errors, we got z score or standard score. If we standardize residues, we got a t statistic. So z score is z equals to x minus mu over sigma. If we standardize t, it will equals to x minus x bar over s. Statistic inference is to draw conclusions or make decisions concerning a population based on sample data. So two ways to do statistic inference, estimation or hypothesis testing. As we can see from this figure, from the population, we draw a sample. And then based on the sample, for example, the sample mean weight, we try to estimate the population mean weight. Or we use the sample evidence to test the claim that the population mean weight is 60 kilograms. 